Hey everybody, welcome to What the Flicks discussion of Girls season, I don't know anything anymore. Three. Three, three. season three of Girls. Two episodes uh, began it mm -hmm. called Females Only and Truth or Dare. There we go. Anna mm -hmm. Kasparian, welcome. Hey, Lots thank of you. Lots Ben Mankiewicz. Uh, I loved uh, the first episode. Uh, I didn't like the second one as much, but I, I liked them both. But I, I thought the I thought they came out of the gate very, very strong. No, absolutely. And I was I, I, I actually I mean I don't know what the reasoning behind it uh, for doubling up, but I'm glad that we got the full you know Jessa rehab thing out in one night. Uh, yeah, it's true. I think the reason partly is uh, marketing for uh, looking for looking yeah. so that there's back to back episodes of girls so that you're set to watch the full that hour, hour and then yeah. next week. <laughs> They want girls fully premiered and running to help out looking I guess, its premiere yeah. next week. Uh, and we will uh, we'll have reviews of, of looking, assuming <laughs> that it's any good. It, I, I've seen the pilot. It's oh, it, it was good? Yes. Okay, great. But back to girls. Back to girls. Um, so the, the, the problem with girls is nothing to do with girls. It's that most of the mainstream media conversation about girls is about the stupidest stuff in the history of the world. <laughs> like about her nudity or yes. non-nudity. Well, like, I, I, I kind of feel like I need to stand up for Tim Malloy, who works at The Wrap with me in, in, in New York office. He's the guy who asked the question at oh, the TCA yeah. that set this whole thing off about the nudity. I wasn't in the room at the time. I wasn't at TCA this year. I give him the benefit of the doubt that he asked the question in terms of what's the show's intent. Yeah. Because what I think is cool about the show is that in American culture in general, and especially in American television, we don't get a lot of what I call quotidian nudity, like sort of day-to-day, -day, no big deal, part of the wallpaper nudity. Nudity is usually, it's there to titillate, or it's there to shock, or it's there to for shame some, something. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, There's yeah. some function to it. And Lena Dunham is very canny about just like, nope, this is how I live, this is how people I know live, this is what our lives look like. Uh, you know, the, the show gets compared to Sex and the City a lot, and the bras on that show always drove me up the wall. Mm. You know, they're so, they're, like, they're, they're having sex all the time and they've always got their bras on and I don't have sex with women, it's my understanding they don't necessarily <laughs> keep the brassiere in place during the lovemaking <laughs> act. So I'm glad on this show it's like, no, we're gonna yeah. be naked and that's just, just how it is. Sometimes. If it's a really sexy bra, you'll keep it on, right? <laughs> no, I'm a fan of that. So I, I just want to jump in really quickly because I feel like that show is supposed to appeal to my demographic, right? Like the, the women in that show are in my age group and I don't, I'm not bothered by the nudity at all and I understand why the nudity is there because I compare that group of girls to my group of friends and the nudity happens all the time. I mean, whatever, I'm, I'm changing my clothes in front of my friends or I'm just chilling on the couch uh, and my girlfriends are over and I don't feel like putting pants on so I'm just wearing like boy shorts or whatever. Like that stuff happens in real life. So I like the fact that it's more realistic. Your life sounds fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. We're, we're um, gonna have slash fiction now. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's great. Um, but I, I just, I am happy that he asked that question. I think that the phrasing of the question was not perfect, which sure. is why people immediately started criticizing him for it but I do think that it was an important question for him to ask and Lena Dunham answered it perfectly this is this is realistic this is you know my day-to-day -day life I'm paraphrasing obviously and there's nothing yeah I didn't mean to step at it there I, I forgot I read no, 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 it. No, no, no. I, I was yeah. gonna bring it up anyway yeah so but I, I, I don't I don't even fault that question it's been a focus for for four years yeah the other like, thing is why are we asked this question now when yeah. we're going into season three yeah you know? and one question of course the reason that the the question meant anything is because they're so frustrated with talking about that right like if it had been the first time they've been asked it's why it's it's, it's, it's an acceptable question right. to ask once it's the problem with the media is that you know you're all doing we're all doing everybody else's job too and sure. so there's they're great fixated. repetition it's just yeah. like the show to me there were so many I mean I, I wrote a whole list this is just episode two there's just so many great lines. I mean, it is so well. Re I don't know how realistic it is. I don't know any any girls in their twenties except you. And but it doesn't like it doesn't matter because it strikes me as plausible that there are some people who live like this, mm -hmm. and I'm interested in how they live. And we have somebody who works at the show here who doesn't like the show because she doesn't think it speaks to you know these aren't these aren't this is not how my friends are. Like, right. Who gives a shit? They're certainly not like mine are either. I mean, I respect that opinion, but. Like the important thing is, is that it, like it, it whatever it, re there is a degree of resonating on this show that is unlike most other shows. Well, and I think the reason that, that argument comes up is that there are so few shows like this 
Uh, I mean, there certainly aren't shows that have sort of taken up the baton as far as dealing with nudity, but as far as being about women and women's concerns, yeah. you know, that any show that's that, that gets stuck with that burden of representation, if in any way you can feel like, oh, well, that's not my story, then it's like, well, fuck that show. And it's like, no, there should be 10 more shows like it, and maybe one of those would be. Yeah, right. You know, we're gonna, I'm sure that's going to come up with looking, you know, because gay people are the same deal. It's like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm invisible on TV except for RuPaul's Drag Race, and now here's this show that's about you know mainstream urban gays but if it's not my specific kind of mainstream urban gay then bah you know it's bah, why bother and 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 that's that's more about the culture not providing uh, uh, multiple voices and right. not about the, this one show telling its one story and, and don't get caught up as you watch these shows and think about these shows and in, in responding to what the what the sort of the what the media's description, I don't mean to say that, I always sound so conspiratorial, but what the, what the mainstream discussion of the show is, like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be speaking to a generation. It doesn't have to be represented. And they didn't set out to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I'll use it, because I know it'll work on both of you guys. I don't know which one of you people knows sports less. Um, <laughs> but uh, Brett uh, Favre. Favre. <laughs> Brett, Favre. Right, Brett Favre. You know, we all got, uh, many of us got tired of Brett Favre because the me every time he did anything, every announcer would be like, oh, Brett Favre, only Brett Favre could do that. <laughs> you know, I've seen other guys do that. Like, he's not, he's yes. not heroic, and so you, but that wasn't his fault. Right. And it's not Lena Dunham's fault if her show caught on so much that some people say, look at the voice of the new generation For of 20-something. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I thought that, it's, and I, from the second episode, just I wanted to mention a couple of lines. Um, uh, when Adam Driver, what's his name on the show? What's his? I think it's Adam. Adam, right? Right, mm -hmm. right. When Adam says, you know, when Lena says to him, "I don't think you know anything about female friendship," right? Right. And he says, "I don't want to if it involves ignoring all logic and being totally hysterical." Um, <laughs> like again, and the fact that a, like, and the fact that Lena Dunham wrote that line, yeah. like, it's good because at while one hand you think you know he's a guy and he's an idiot for saying that, on the other hand she like gets that. That that's how men are going to respond to this, and that there's something to that in some female friendships. Um, uh, you know, uh, the the conversation with the the black woman who she accuses of being a lesbian for wearing a vest, <laughs> right. who was molested oh by her God. uncle. That whole conversation about like, yeah, she probably is a lesbian, but I don't want to tell like anybody because I don't like sports. <laughs> was such a great scene. That was I, such a great yeah. scene. You know, and and I'll tell you, I have a very good friend who was married to a woman, realized he was gay, and the only gay person he knew was this guy in his office who was like lip syncing to Britney Spears gay. Right. And he was like, well, I'm not. I'm that, not that right? so you know, and it wasn't until he met like a more diverse group that he realized, okay, there's there's more than one way to do it, you know. So right. I, I totally get the, yeah. the sports lesbian thing. Um, I what, one of the things I love about this is how Hannah, you know, seemingly you know she's back on her meds, she, things are, are are looking up. The the book is coming along. She goes on the road trip. You can tell, thinking like, I'm going to get some material out right. of this, you know. And then when nothing is organically popping up as a thing to write about, you know, Adam pulls over, like, goes, okay, let's go for a hike, and instead, she not only doesn't go on the hike, she listens to This American Life, which is <laughs> other people's <laughs> stories. Oh, that's great, that's great. <laughs> that's a great thing. Yeah. Uh, and then, but also not before observing in another great line about how disappointing the road trip is, that this road trip is like a Don Henley song. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, uh, I love the Truth or Dare line, where she's like, oh my God, you never played Truth or Dare? And Adam is like, I'm aware that there's a game called Truth or Dare, <laughs> which is so like I. So many people think they know stuff because they know that it th exists. They know that it exists. Right. Right. right yeah. You know. Well, and so, I, I also. I'm sorry. I also love the line about um, this. It's where it's where children learn how to behave like adults because that, in a way, is what this whole so, show is. Yeah. It's yes. that uh, that part of your life where like I'm a grown up now, but maybe not entirely yeah, you know. I think that's what I like about the show the most it's a bunch of 20 something still trying to find their identity sure. and it's symbolic and it's something that I think a lot of people in that age group are going through right now so it's kind of relieving to see people play that out in a popular show because it makes you feel like all right I'm not alone this is this is what's supposed to happen right now um, but what I did not like about the episode and I, I'm starting to find this a problem within the entire series 
Shoshana's character oh, yeah. just gets on my nerves. And I understand that she's supposed to be neurotic, and I've tried to be kind of open-minded to her and her character, but I feel like at this point, at this very point in the series, she's kind of taking away from how good the show can be. A little bit caricaturing her, I think. Like, yes. I, there were a couple moments there where, like, she doesn't connect with anybody. She just says nothing but off-the-wall things, and you wonder, like, why would these... Where is her, she seems like she'd be friends with other girls. She's, she's a little non sequitur theater yeah. at times, but I did love the Chex Mix scene where yeah. she's talking about uh, 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 Jessa in this very sort of glowing, oh, she's so yes. cool, she's so amazing, and Hannah's trying to be, give her more of a realistic perspective. She's like, well, no, you, you must be remembering that wrong. Yeah. Maybe that was, you were the one crying. You were the one you know? crying, yeah. <laughs> um, that's true, but I, I, I think it's a great point about, so that's David Mamet's daughter, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, and they're all great. It's just that sometimes I think that character is right, not is incongruous with the, that group of friends. She'd have a yeah. group of friends who watched E. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we only get little bits and pieces of what's happening with Marnie. And Marnie's actually my favorite character, so mm. I got a little frustrated with that. So all we know at this point about Marnie is that her boyfriend left her. We don't know why. I'm, I'm guessing that we'll find out later. They were in making the grilled pizzas. They were gonna make grilled pizzas. They bought all the ingredients, Who and then all of a sudden, that? boom, he's but he, done. Because Charlie decided, no, this isn't right, and the only way to the way to do this is to just just, walk out. just do it. You just gotta walk out if you know. It's We've not, not right. heard the last of those two. They're no. they're although he left the show. Like oh, he, he does, yeah, right. Yeah, he did. so I think okay. I think so we, we have, have I think we have them. heard the last okay. of them. But you know, she'll find somebody else. But Rita Wilson is great as her mm. mom, and I love that her name is Marnie Marie. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was, a, that was a nice little. I, speaking of Rita Wilson, like it's so many cool people like popping up in these: Richard E. Grant, uh, Kim Gordon, Deborah a Monk, Amy, Schu Deborah Amy Monk Schumer. Amy Schumer. Deborah Monk was great in her un Deborah Monk like role. Yeah. And she was terrific, and Amy Schumer was fantastic. I mean, God, <laughs> she's she, pregnant now. Yeah, she's pregnant yeah. now. <laughs> that that whole scene was so uncomfortable, and I wanted <laughs> Lena Dunham. I wanted Hannah to come out and be like, no, bitch. Like, right. <laughs> but she was just, I mean, of course, that's her character. Yeah, that's her yeah, personality. She's going like, uh, to be passive. Yeah. And, but I yeah. thought Amy Schumer was, I mean, that was just, that yeah. was, that's funny. That's comedy. That that's a funny, funny girl doing that. Yeah. Uh, one more line. I'm starting to recognize, while I'm a victim of circumstances, I have a sickness that someone else gave to me. And when I remember that, I don't want to huff lighter fluid anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was so great. Yes. I, I did, it's funny, it's taken me two seasons. I only just now realized that Jemima Clark, who plays Jessa, is kind of a dead ringer for a young Charlotte Rampling. A little bit, yeah. And which now makes me think, is this whole thing Georgie girl? No. Oh, because right. you've got the sort of, you know, the Zaftig girl, the center of it, who turns out to be the, you know, the, right. the, the romantic right. target. Right, she's the, right, she's the, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's interesting, that's good, I'm sure. I bet, I bet Lena Dunham likes Georgie girl. I, I wouldn't that, be surprised. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that were true. Um, Jessa, though, too, I mean, it's funny, because two of these girls are pretty unpleasant to listen to. So, like, Jessa and yeah. Shosh, like, sometimes you just, you know, I'm, I mean, I was with Adam, like, you know, I'm like, like, I can't shut up. Like, hitting the radio, and yeah. like, she bought the freaking rocking chair, and the. <laughs> well, she's unbearable. The, but, right, Jessa, but Jessa has this complexity to her that I enjoy watching, right? So she seems like she's kind of put together on the outside, just like Hannah was mentioning. Like, she's put together on the outside, but inside she experiences like this deep darkness and sadness. And I want to know more about it. So she's like one of those characters that I look forward to seeing. Um, she and was just so cruel to a couple of She is cruel, There's but something seductive about that kind of glamorous train wreck, you know? Yeah. Yes, where definitely. they just seems like they have it all together, but they're, you know. They're a mess. Like the part yeah. where she's having a conversation with the other guy that's in rehab with her, the guy who thought he the was Richard gonna fuck Grant, her, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, he said, oh, it hasn't always been so fun, has it? Talking about her past and her yeah. experiences, how she experienced way too much for someone her age. And she had like this one moment where she was really honest with herself and she was like, no, not really. I thought, I agree, and yeah. I, so I thought that when he made his move on her, right, where she was like, you were almost charming up until this <laughs> moment. Yeah. And then she realized that he's been cheating this whole time in rehab, taking right, drugs, right. that that's why he's been so mellow and yeah. able to handle this. I thought that was gonna be her, and this is why it's not a typical show, I guess. I thought that would be her, I mean, you know what, I, I need to talk myself back into this rehab facility. Like this mm. person I sort of thought had it figured out and was cool and was above it. He's actually no, he's a above it, because he's yeah. just a junkie, yeah. right. Because she had that moment, her disappointment of, oh, you, this is why you're like this. Right. Uh, but I don't know, I, there were, uh, 
uh, yeah, really the, the, a sign of it, the show's significance, the, the quality of, of, of actors who are coming in. I, I, I suspect it's pretty easy for her to make a phone call. And, yeah. it, and it's still, and get people, and it's still pretty amazing at the end of the show, given her age, mm -hmm. to see directed by Lena Dunham, written, written by, by Lena created Dunham, by, by, yeah. starring Lena Dunham. It's super impressive, by, yeah. and I'm very jealous. Yeah. Like, we're in, <laughs> we're in two completely different worlds, but I mean, she's my age, and she's achieved so much, and I'm super proud of her. Bob and, Bal sorry, go ahead. Mm -hmm. And I don't consider her a voice of our generation, that's ridiculous, <laughs> but I do see her as a role model in terms of work ethic and everything. Well, she's, she, the thing is, she's a she, voice right, right, of her yeah, generation. She's yeah. just not the, the voice, voice she's of an, her she's generation. An, she's an important voice of her generation. Uh, Bob Balaban played the worst uh, therapist <laughs> ever. I mean, very well, as yeah. always, but yeah. Jesus, that good. What does he make out of paper mache? <laughs> <laughs> what does he make out of paper mache? Yeah, I had a chant. Yeah, what was your chant? <laughs> yeah, but to be fair, I did want to know what he makes out of paper mache. I was a little curious too. <laughs> yeah, uh, she seemed ba embarrassed bagel, about it. Bagel and cream cheese, like <laughs> in the after hours. But then they get these yeah. moments in a way that Modern Family does that aren't cheesy, that tug at your heartstrings very effectively. Like when Shosh has that remarkably. Uh, ob accidentally observant line about thank God that she didn't have a real boyfriend uh, to help her through this difficult time who's adjusted and has a job and has friends and has places to go and things to do. <laughs> thank God she's got this deadbeat loser who could come take care of her, you know, uh, you know, because you didn't have to go off and hang out with your best friend. And he's like, you know, and it looks like it's reaching Aww. him. You know, he's like, yeah, well, I don't have anything. So then he's like, eh, she's my best friend. Oh, I, I gotta love go that hike. Part. You know, right? You know, yeah, yeah. totally. No, and then shows like every girl watching was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, anyway, it's good to have it back. I'm, uh, it's funny. She's a great writer, and uh, uh, it was great to see it back. Yeah, yeah I love the show. St strong return. I'm looking forward to the rest of the season. Thanks, everybody.